teach an on-campus small group that's going to meet on Sunday, March the 13th. So go ahead and print out the lesson manuscript. You should have had that with an attachment as an attachment to this email that had the link where you could watch this video now. If you haven't done also already, go ahead and get that printed out and get that in front of you there. And what we're going to do is just kind of walk through this and maybe point out some things that could help you uh, as you lead and prepare, give you some things to think about uh, in this uh lesson for Sunday. Now, we're going to be wrapping up the series on Nehemiah Sunday called Directly Challenge. It's been a great series that has actually, I believe God has really used to challenge all of us to look in different directions and to see how what he wants to do in us and through us in those. And so we're wrapping that up this Sunday by looking at Nehemiah chapter 8. And Brett will be teaching us from that passage and helping us understand the importance of the scripture. This nation had wandered away from God, wandered away from his word. Uh, they had lost their knowledge of the word and their appreciation of the word of God. And so in chapter 8, God uses Nehemiah and Ezra to call the people back to that. And we'll be learning about that Sunday. Now, uh, obviously, this lesson is going to complement that. Uh, and so it gives you some ideas of what's coming up in that regard there as far as the message, but also what we'll be looking at. We're going to be studying a passage of Scripture which is oftentimes referred to as the longest book in the Bible, or excuse me, the longest chapter in the Bible, and relax, we're not going to study the whole chapter, but we are going to take a section out of it. This is Psalm 119. Psalm 119 is a, is a chapter in the Bible that focuses upon the scriptures, upon the Bible. It's the Bible talking about the Bible itself, the Bible teaching about the Bible itself. And it has some very important things for us, especially in light of what we'll be hearing on Sunday morning. Page one gives you the big idea, the big picture of what we're going to be looking at there with the lesson overview. So take a moment to glance at that. Page two and three is your introduction. Uh, this introduction may be one that you want to use. Uh, you may, may choose rather to use a different introduction or uh, just come up, make this one your own in whatever way you want to do that. Now listen, the introduction is simply designed to help everybody kind of get focused on what we're going to be talking about. This is more challenging sometimes for you there in the nine o'clock hour of leading an on-campus small group than those in the 1030 because at nine o'clock you haven't heard the message yet. So you kind of have to help work that out yourself. You know your group. You can find something that helps get everybody focused together to begin looking at what you're going to be studying. If you're coming out of the nine o'clock worship hour, then you have Brett's message that you can use to help people do that and to help do a little segue into what you're going to be teaching. Now teach the text begins there on page four. And as I said, it's Psalm 119, but we're going to be looking at the passage of 9 through 16. So you'll be studying those particular verses there in the context of a whole chapter where the Bible teaches about the Bible, where the Bible speaks about itself. And so keep that in mind there. So great. That chapter is a great revelation to us of the Bible and of the significance of the Bible for us uh, and for all who claim to be followers of Jesus. Now, and in this is what we're going to be finding out is the way we get to know God better is through his word, through his Bible, because the Bible is actually the revelation of God uh, to, to us in written form. Jesus is the perfect revelation of God. And then the Bible is how God has chosen to communicate that message to us. It's interesting, even in the 21st century, when we have a lot of technology and stuff going on, God still communicates to us through the written page, through the written scriptures. And we're going to talk about why that in just a few moments. On page five begins the teaching points. There's three teaching points for this passage. The first is recognize the importance of God's Word. And we're going to be uh, focusing on that. Why is God's Word important? What is significant about it? You'll see there in the second paragraph is this comment made about the treasuring God's Word. It's good, some good information there. Don't skip over that. And then the rest of the scripture, the rest of the teaching time here is really focusing on this point here uh, concerning how we view the Bible will determine, determine what we do with it. What perspective we have of the scripture is oftentimes going to determine how we respond to it. And so that's very important that we understand what the, the have a have a correct view of the Bible and understand the significance of it. Second, the New Testament passage down there at the bottom uh, reference there is going to be of helpful to, helpful to you. That's on page five, Second Timothy chapter three verses fourteen through seventeen. In that passage, Paul talks about the Scripture being God breathed. In other words, the ultimate author, the writer of the Scripture, is God Himself. He uses human instruments, human people. And he uses their personalities and he uses their individuality to record the scripture. But the words, the, the, the truth is ultimately from God himself. And also there's another part about this God breathe I don't think we need to miss. And God breathed and God, God has breathed life into those scriptures. The, the, the Bible is a living book 
about the living Lord. It's not the dead words of a dead man. It's the living word of the living Lord. And we need to remember that it has life to it and it gives life. It brings life there. And also the Bible has, and this passage points out there in 2 Timothy 3, is the Bible provides guardrails. There's guardrails there that are put into place to help us, to protect us, and also to guardrails that are in place to prepare us for what God wants to do in our lives. Uh, there's a quote that one of my f favorite pr professors from seminary, uh, he's a man that's quoted quite often because he's one of the greatest students of the Bibles I know, as well as one of the best teachers of the Bible I know. Uh, and he uh, he impacted my life in giving me a continued desire to study the scriptures, but also helping me to understand how to do that. And he had a passion for people just not knowing the Bible, but letting the Bible be known in them. And in regards to what we've just been talking about, there's a quote there that he adds. And by the way, I'm going to throw out several quotes from him as we go through this video. And I will I will include those in the email that you get so you can have them there in front of you if you decide to use them or maybe reference them in your own teaching time. Or maybe they're simply a way to prompt you in your own personal preparation uh, there as you get ready to lead or teach that on-campus small group. Here is one thing he said, the Word of God was not written to satisfy our curiosity but it was written to change our lives. The perspective we have of the Bible is going to determine what we do with it. He went on to say this, that the way to come to the Word of God, read it as though it were His, speaking of God, His love letter to you. Your perspective of that Bible, how you view it, is going to determine what you do with it. Now, page six continues this discussion of that first teaching point, but we also find the second teaching point there as well. And it says, reorganize our priority to show the importance of God's word. In other words, if we're going, if the Bible is going to be, uh, is significant to us, then we're going to do whatever we need to do to make sure we are having time to invest in the scriptures, to put our, immerse ourselves in the scriptures, uh, to study the scriptures, to let the Bible be taken into our lives. And to do that, you're going to have to say no to something to be able to say yes to something else. That's just a principle of life. If I've got to say no to something to be able to say yes to something else. And in this is especially true in regards to the scriptures. If we're going to to invest it, let this invest in the scriptures and immerse ourselves in them and let them be immersed in us, then we're going to have to say no to something so we can say yes to, to that. Sometimes that be saying no may be saying no something that's good, but to say yes to the better or the best there. And there's a statement at the bottom of page six that I want to add to it if I can a little bit, maybe put a little edit on it, okay? And it says it all comes down to priorities. If it's important to you, you will make time for it. If it's not important to you, you won't. You know, it can be important, but unless it's important to you, you're not going to adjust your schedule. You're not going to say no to something else so you can say yes to that. It's got to be important to you, and that's where it comes to the, the priority aspect of it, as well as tying back to our previous discussion about how we view the Bible, the perspective we have of it. Now, on page 7, you'll see the continued discussion there of that teaching point. I would point out at the very top, there's a statement there uh, that I think is very, very helpful for us, and don't miss that. It said, the end goal wasn't to know the Word, it was to know the God of the Word. And that's so important. we got to realize the end goal, the, the, the Bible in some ways is a means to an end. And don't misunderstand what I'm saying there, because I don't want to... Um, I, I want to lessen the significance of the scripture itself. But we've got to understand that the goal is not so I can just know what the Bible says. The goal is so that I can know the writer, the author of the Bible. That's why God has given that to us there. The, the New Testament reference there of John chapter 5, verse 39 and 40 helps us understand that as Jesus had the interaction with the religious leaders of that day who, who knew a lot, knew the Bible, probably knew the Old Testament better than me and you ever will know it. Uh, they could quote it. They knew all the facts. They had all of it there but it had not penetrated their hearts. And because they had not allowed it to penetrate their hearts and not allowed it seeing the Bible as a way for them to know God and to know who he is better, they missed that first coming, that first advent. They missed the Messiah himself. And uh, down there at the very bottom of that page, you'll see it says, the Bible is important for the express reason that it reveals God to us. 
And that's a very significant point for us to uh, help everybody understand and grab hold of. Sometimes I'm not sure even of those who have grown up in church, been in church, we see it that way. We see the Bible sometimes as just a book that we try to follow instead of seeing it as a book that reveals the God who we do follow. And the final uh, point there is the bottom of page 7. Respond to God's word with action. And the scripture there is verses 13 through 16 of Psalm 119. In other words, it's pointing out to us that the Bible, unless the Bible begins to penetrate us and begins to get expressed in our lives, uh, then how significant it is to us or how really has it accomplished its purpose. And I think that's a very important thing for us to wrestle with there. There's a great question that uh, he puts in the third paragraph on Papa page eight, and I think is a question that everyone should wrestle with as they read and study the scripture. And that question is, what should I do in response to what I'm learning? Uh, oftentimes we use the question of what can I learn from this as I'm reading through a passage, but the better question is, what do I do in response to this there? Uh, and as you read through here and as you study this, you're going to see that continues to be the emphasis, not only from the psalmist itself, but for what God has for us. We should be looking at the scripture as to what does God want to do with that in my life? How does he want to change me? How does he want to, what is it about that, that God wants to do in my life through this truth? What do I, how do I need to respond to it? As I told you, Dr. Howard Hendricks was one of my favorite professors, and he has several quotes that I think are helpful for us in this. He's a lot of quotes because he's one of those guys whenever he would say things and we'd all reach to, as students, you jot them down because we can use this one day. And so I'm using it one day right now. And here's a couple of those quotes. He said, in the spiritual realm, the opposite of ignorance is not knowledge. It is obedience. I hope you caught that. The opposite of ignorance is not knowledge, but obedience. If we're not going to be ignorant of the Bible, if we're going to be learned of the Bible, we're going to be obedient to it. And he has another quote. The Bible is the divine news of divine means, excuse me. The Bible is the divine means of developing spiritual maturity. There is no other way because it is the Bible, which is the living word of the living Lord that transforms us and changes us. He goes on to say this. Biblically speaking, to hear and not to do is not to hear at all. I think that one bears repeating, huh? Biblically speaking, to hear and not to do is not to hear at all. And then here's one final quote for you to think about in regards to you as a teacher, as a, as a facilitator, leader of your small groups, one that I have to wrestle with all the time. It says, teaching that impacts is not head-to-head, -head but heart to heart. In light of what we're talking about, think that through. Teaching that impacts is not head to head, but heart to heart. Uh, and that kind of wraps up our discussion there of that passage and those, those verses as we seek to gain a greater grip on our Bible in the sense of how God wants to use that in your life. Page nine is your application moment. Page 11 is the small group handout, which, by the way, is an expression of what we just talked about in that third teaching point. So don't neglect it, okay? Leave some time. Use that. However it works out in your group, breaking the small clusters, doing it as a group over. Let the Bible have an opportunity to take traction in your life before you uh, uh, send your group home on Sunday. Uh, page uh, 10 is the conclusion, along with this week's memory verse. And uh, that'll help you kind of wrap things up there as you uh, uh, study together. Hey, thank you for being one of those that says, I'm going to let God use me in whatever way he can to help others become disciples of Jesus. Thank you for being a part of, of what God is doing at Dayspring and, and seeking to give every man, woman, and child repeated access to the gospel. It's a joy to serve with you. You have a great time uh, doing that Sunday. Oh, by the way, don't forget... Sunday is, uh, is when uh, Daylight Savings Time begins, so you're going to be turning your clock forward an hour on Saturday night. That means we're going to lose an hour there on Sunday, Saturday night, Sunday morning. So, hey, adjust your day Saturday to, to be ready to be here on time uh, Sunday morning and to be able to share with your small group. Lead them as you study the Word of God 
so that we know the heart of our God and we can follow Him. God bless. My God is mighty to save.